How long do you expect an air handler to last until it breaks down? Two years? Maybe five? Regular monthly inspection and maintenance can extend this period, often by many years. It also improves the system's energy efficiency, as well as the facility's indoor air quality. Maintenance tasks on air handling units may be performed by qualified trained maintenance staff. If repairs are needed, hire a qualified service technician. Be sure to follow good safety practices, including procedures for lockout tagout. Don't forget that working with and around the electrical equipment in an air handling unit represents an electrical hazard. Regular maintenance of an air handler requires a number of actions. First, gather the maintenance log for the air handling unit, including the inspection schedule. If you don't have one, start keeping one. Keep a separate log for each air handling unit. Refer to the log whenever checking the air handler. If you find any problems, be sure to note them in the log and have them fixed immediately. Next, as part of the unit's annual maintenance, inspect the air supply fans and motors. More information about this inspection can be found in the fans and motors section of this CD. Check the static pressure gauges for the coils in the air handling unit. Clean the coils, as well as the condensate drains and lines as required. For more information on cleaning coils and condensate lines and drains, view the coil maintenance section on this CD. Many maintenance tasks for air handlers require special training or the assistance of a qualified HVAC contractor. Rebalancing the air supply is one of those tasks. Over time, the amount of air that the unit uses and distributes changes. Consequently, the unit should be rebalanced once a year. Set the minimum outside air intake correctly. Outside air intake rates are usually set too high due to a range of problems from incorrect measurements to troubles with ongoing operation and maintenance. It is important to set the outside air intake correctly. If you set it incorrectly, you could cause indoor air quality problems or occupant health issues. So again, if you're not trained to perform this task, contact a qualified service technician. Adjust the static pressure set point and schedule. More often than not, the static pressure set point is based on the maximum cooling load conditions. The resulting setting is often a lot higher than it needs to be. The proper set point should be established by determining the minimum and maximum static pressures. Then the set point is fixed between those two levels. Optimize the supply air temperatures. Identifying the correct supply air temperature settings is the most important step toward improving the air handling unit's operations. If the cold air supply temperature is set too low, the unit may remove more moisture from the air than it needs to, which wastes energy. If the cold air supply temperature is set too high, the fan may need to move more air to keep people in the building comfortable. This also wastes energy. Setting the right cold air supply temperature helps manage the fan power properly. A qualified HVAC contractor can help develop the temperature reset schedules and program them into the system. If the building doesn't have a programmable system, then the maintenance staff should be trained to check the reset schedules and make manual changes to the system as needed. Improve the economizer's operation and control. The economizer eliminates the need for mechanical cooling when the outside air temperature is lower than the supply air temperature set point. Maximizing the use of the economizer can save a lot of energy and money, especially in cooler climates. There are several ways to optimize economizer operation. Combine the economizer control with optimal cold deck temperature reset. Adjust the mixed air temperature 1 to 2 degrees lower than the cold deck temperature set point. Set the operating range as widely as possible. In the upper Midwest, this is between 30 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Use the economizer to directly control supply air temperature when the outside temperature is lower than the cold deck set point and ensure the damper operates properly. 
If you have questions, call Focus on Energy for assistance or contact a qualified technician. Improve the terminal box operation. The terminal box directly controls room temperature and airflow. Improving how the terminal box operates can improve system performance and make the space more comfortable to work in. Make sure that dampers and damper controls operate correctly. The dampers in the air handling unit are responsible for mixing air and controlling the economizer. Check to make sure the dampers are working as they should about twice a year. Eliminate duct leakage. Using an ultrasonic leak detector, thoroughly check all of the air supply and return ducts. If you find any leaks, have them fixed right away with caulk or duct tape. Finally, maintain the proper operation of time clocks and EMS systems. If possible, replace all time clocks within the system with a centralized energy management system, or EMS, to save costs. However, if you can't do this, be sure to check the clocks weekly to make sure they're working properly and are set correctly. Don't forget to reset the clocks when there are changes in how the space is used, such as in the summer. Clocks should also be reset for seasonal changes, including changes from standard to daylight savings time. Not only will regular maintenance tasks keep your air handler running well, but it will help save money and keep the space comfortable to work in.